fourth quarter. What did you see from him? How locked in was he? Yeah, he's had a few games like that this year where uh, he struggles in the first half and then um, just goes crazy in the second half. And I think that uh, that just takes a maturity as a player. Um, and I feel like all the best players in the league do that, you know what I mean? Because it only takes a couple shots going in to get a rhythm. And uh, he knows we need him to make shots down the stretch to, to win games. So I was proud of him for um, sticking with it. Uh, Mike, after missing or after d turning down a three and driving, it looked like your teammates were telling you to just shoot the ball. Then you hit that three in the corner, that big shot. When your teammates say that stuff to you, do you register it? Does it? Do you? Are you interested in that feedback? Yeah, no, nah, I'm definitely interested in it. Like they want me to shoot it, I'll shoot it. I mean, I felt like uh, they closed out pretty well, and it was going to be a contested shot. But at the end of the day, I could shoot over uh, most people. So when they tell me just catch and shoot it. Um, that definitely gave me confidence to just shoot those, some of those shots down the stretch. Mike, I think you were at just 19 minutes played entering the fourth. You come back in to start the quarter. What's just kind of your mentality? What, what are you thinking heading into the fourth when you know you got a lot in the tank there? Yeah, I think same thing um, that, that most of our team has is just uh, resilience. You know what I mean? It might not go our way the first half for certain quarters, but um, we're all going to be needed down the stretch. Uh, one, one person can't beat this team. They're too good. So uh, I just had to, um, you know, refocus and uh, hit a couple big ones down the stretch. Michael, when you know that the game is going to be more of a defensive-minded game versus an offensive-minded game like it was in game one, how does that change your approach, or does it change your approach at all, just going from game to game in a series like this? Yeah, no, we talked about it before the game. Um, I think the first game against Phoenix, it was a high scoring game. And then the second game, I think it was like 97 to 87, something like that. So we talked about that before the game. And we knew like game to game in the playoffs, it can be completely different. So um, we knew that. And then you just got to adjust to the feel of the game and how it was going. Because of the NBA bubble, this team has, this core hasn't been on the road in the conference finals. So what do you kind of expect out of that atmosphere? What's kind of be the message to when yeah, you Yeah, I think, like? uh, it's definitely going to be hostile there. You know, they, they still feel like they're in this series. Obviously, um, it's the first of four. It's not the first of two. So they're not going to just roll over. And now they're back in L.A., so they're looking to get two wins back home. So uh, we we just – we're going to look back on that Phoenix series, you know, when they tied it up at uh, in Phoenix. And we're going to try to not let that happen in L.A. But it's going to take a lot of focus. And our defense is going to have to carry over into L.A. for sure. Michael, are, are you surprised that some people around the country claim they're just discovering the Nuggets for the first time, including Jokic and I guess all you guys? Uh, I mean, I think that's probably how it is with most small market teams. Uh, and then this stage is just so different, you know what I mean? This is a huge stage. A lot of people are probably watching these games that don't normally watch NBA. So we don't really let that get to us. I mean, we like I said before, we got a lot of dudes who aren't really big into the social media thing or the, you know, feeding into that, which I think that plays to our advantage, uh, being the type of small market team that we are. So um, I don't think we mind that at all. Would you like to say anything to people who are just figuring out who you are? No, nah, nah, I don't really care. <laughs> We always talk about the way Nicola is offensively, but tonight I know it takes all five to defend a guy like Anthony Davis, but to hold him to four or 15 from the field, what can you say about Joker's defensive impact? Yeah, he got the uh, defensive player of the game chain, and he deserves it. You know, AD's one of the hardest dudes to stop, um, and, and Yoke was playing in one-on-one -on -one a lot of the game, so um, it was a huge... Huge effort from him. You know, if AD had a game like he had last game, we wouldn't have won that game. So, uh, Nicola definitely stepped up on that end. Yeah. Cool. Thank you, Mike. All right. You got one more, Brandon. Yeah. Grab that mic. Thank you. <laughs> Sorry, Nick. Uh, that defensive possession with AD at the end, did you – were you able to strip that or did he – could you take me through that possession? Yeah. Um, I just – he kind of had it on a fast break and had me in a one-on-one -on -one situation on the break. So, I just had to wall up and um, – not let him get anything easy, but also not foul him. Um, and then I think he tried to pass it out or something. I don't think I stripped it. He might have just lost it. But that was definitely was a big uh, play for us. 